Well, hello. Um, just a quick video tonight about a very important aspect about building one of these coops. Um, as the title will suggest, it's about installing the doors on these coops. Um, <clears throat> any, if you're in the midst of a build, or if you're researching a build, or if you're researching your current build, or if you want to build one, one recurring issue that comes up is the huge headache installing these doors can be. Um, there's stories online about some chaps spending upwards of 40 and 50 hours a door, okay, just to install a door, not to mention the rear hatch. Fortunately, if you're buying a new coupe, a new kit, and a Gen 2 kit like this one, it's a red body coupe, it's the easiest way to, to see to uh, recognize them. The doors and hatch are much, much easier to install than the old ones. I'm going to quickly give you how um, the steps I did to install both my doors. I did them both this afternoon, both doors this afternoon, and the hatch on about, with the hatch, about three hours. So what I'm going to suggest is that, and I had some problems too, don't, don't get me wrong, but what I'm going to suggest is that if you do it the way I suggest, you might save a lot of time. For me, I don't, maybe this may have taken me 10 hours had I followed the book, and it took me about an hour aside, so not too bad. So what I did first off is I just completely, I read the book, the guides, and um, I completely deviated from that. And I'll tell you what I did to get these doors on, and they're actually, they're, they're just about finished here now. Um, essentially this, I built the frame that the door sits on, and, um, and then attached the door, and make sure the frame fit the body. Then I attached the door, okay, so kind of a two-step process. And uh, actually, it's a bigger two-step process. First, do the door, and then I'm going to do the window. Once the door is sitting just perfect, I do the window part two. But doing the door, the fundamental concept, the fundamental time saver is to realize two things. First of all, you want the frame to fit the chassis, to open and close and, and latch, and be able to open and, you know, and to sit level. And B, you want the door to fit the body. Okay, so the door to sit in its cutout, nice and flush, and ultimately you fix the gaps, but generally you want it to fit in there and follow the contours of the body. So A, if you can make the frame do what you want it to do, and B, you can make the door do what you want it to do, the third step is to just marry those two pieces together, the frame and the door. Okay, so that's fundamentally what I did. I got the frame to work, and then I got the door to work, and then I attached the two together. Here's what I did. Step one was, I took out all the pieces of the, uh, the door frame and put them on the, on the ground and assembled them. Assembled, there's, there, essentially, the door frame is made up of three pieces. There's a large, uh, long metal frame. Then there's a small metal frame that sits forward of that towards the front of the car. And then the third piece is actually the component that mounts behind the body uh, is, uh, on the, uh, the chassis where the hinge is. So it's the hinge mounting plate. So those three pieces I laid out on the floor, I attached the two frames, uh, the small frame and the large frame together, and the, do the hinge mounting plate, I in turn attached that to the car. When I attached it to the car, it has slots, vertical slots and horizontal slots, so that you can, you can adjust its placement. I did a dead middle top and dead middle bottom, okay? Nice and easy. Second thing I did was I attached the two other pieces together, and attach those through the two cutouts in the in the, uh, the hinge cutouts in the body I attach those to the hinge mounting plate and also the latch mechanism at the other end and I tried it to see how it fit in the hole if it fits in the hole of the of the door opening and swings I was good the next thing I did was I attached the striker to the back of the of the uh, to the door opening so essentially what I did was I took a flashlight shone through from the wheel well to where the hole is. There's a metal frame, a metal bar, metal hole uh, in behind the, uh, the fiberglass body. Shone through and then I drilled um, a 5 16 uh, drill. I drilled from the front, from the inside, through to the back. And then I opened that hole up with a one inch hole saw. Then I mounted the striker. Once the striker was mounted, I in turn tried to close the frame, the metal frame, against that striker. If it matched, if it was the right height, I'm good. If it wasn't, I would adjust the height by playing with the, uh, by putting washers under the hinge mounting plate so it's nice and level, it latches close, that's good. 
Once that was done, I grabbed the door, the fiberglass door, and did the cutouts as per the manual. Okay, that part I did follow. So essentially, there's each door has a uh, depression on the inside, a large square depression. You cut that out with a 5 8 inch sort of flange around the outside of the cutout. And I also cut out the front of the door where it slides onto the frame. That's kind of the access port. I put those two together. I put the door on, slide the door on the frame and try closing it against the striker to see where the striker would hit the door skin. I in turn marked that with a, uh, with a marker when I held the door roughly where it should close, the right height essentially. Marked where the striker hits that door skin, pulled the door off the frame and then cut out the, uh, the latch area of the door skin. Put the door back on and tried that again. Okay, Those are the steps. If the door closed that final time, I'm good to go if it's the right height because ultimately there's one thing you want to have this door do and that's have it sit at the right height because the top curl is what you want alignment. All the other areas around can be trimmed. Okay, So if they're too big, they can be sanded down, cut down, whatever. I use a belt sander but you could use whatever you want. I find a belt sander is a little less aggressive. It takes long, a handheld belt sander takes a long, smooth, straight cut. So you don't, you don't get waves if you're using a Dremel, for example, or a cutoff wheel. That's what I did. But ultimately, the, the main alignment I was concerned with was at the top to make sure it followed the lines of the body. So if you accomplish that and the door latch shut, you're good. Chances are it won't. And here's where you get into a little bit of finicking that you have to do. Firstly, what I found is my door skin was too big for the hole. Okay? So with the door still on the frame, I would open the door, close the door, and see where it struck the opening. And I would take my belt sander and just touch that ear. G -g -g. Try it again. Back and forth. With the front and the back. Five minutes later, the overall skin fit in the opening for the door. So that was good. The next problem I had, however, was that the door wouldn't complete, the frame wouldn't latch against the striker when the skin was on. And I had two problems. A, the striker was too far from where it, where the, uh, with the door skin on the frame, it pulled the frame away from the striker, the extra space. So what I had to do was extend the striker out. So, I opened the door, let the door just kind of hang open. I undid the striker, added some washers, about three-eighths of an inch worth of washers. It was four washers, actually, to pull the striker farther into the door opening. That allowed the latch to line up with it properly. The second thing I had, the problem I had, was that the frame was not being allowed to, to infully engage the striker, to swing all the way in towards the inside of the car. And the reason being was the the square impression on the inside of the door, um, which goes in about three quarters of an inch, um, what it was doing was actually interfering with the frame. The frame was designed to go around that impression, but because of manufacturing tolerances or intolerances, I guess we'll use sarcastically, um, the frame was actually striking that impression. So what I had to do was actually cut that out. So I made a bigger inside hole in the door uh, by about an inch. That allowed the frame to sit farther into the car and thus engage the latch. So that was the second thing I did. So the striker and working the frame around that impression allowed the door to close and the door sits very nicely. So that's what I did. Now overall, um, I'm not guaranteed it's going to save you any time, but a lot of folks online will suggest the frame first, then adding the skin later, which is what I did. Um, but it didn't take 20 hours. Um, it took about an hour. And it wasn't terribly frustrating. It's very messy because this fiberglass is dusty and you're sanding it. It puts a big puff of that pink dust out. We'll call it the pixie dust, the pixie dust on her. Um, once that's done and lined up and latching properly, um, I have the door where I want it to be and I have the frame where I want it to be. The next step would be to, and I did it by eyeball, the, the, uh, the is to reach in behind to feel where the bar is and drill holes through and drill my four holes all around and then put a bolt through with a nut. And if, the, if there's a space, because we have the door exactly where we want it to be and we have the frame where we want it to be, if there's a space, those are supposed to be touching each other inside, but if they're not, if there's a space there, I would add washers.